We now invite board member Joseph Shepard to introduce this year's Doris Kerr Larkin Rising Star Award. Greetings, I'm Joseph Shepard, Director for Lead for Kansas, and I'm proud to be a member of the Board of Directors of the Kansas African American Museum. Providing support for our community is the hallmark of servant leadership. It was Miss Doris Kerr Larkins who demonstrated this commitment by using her voice to save the historic Calvary Baptist Church and starting the first Black Historical Society of Kansas. Today, we honor others who follow in her footsteps. It is with honor to congratulate Dr. Larry Mittenall with the 2021 Doris Kerr Larkins Rising Star Award. My name is Isaiah Mittenall and Larry is my eldest brother. Larry was definitely the leader of the pack um, as the oldest of four. He was always setting the standard for um, our family in regards to education, in regards to just learning and um, growing. So he was always the, the, the leader uh, of the pack. Growing up, our father was a pastor. So um, that was our life 24 seven, being a part of the community and uh, being that family that represented being an outreach for um, those who who needed help or wanted access to a better life. He loves helping people and um, he just, he has a huge heart. He has a heart, a huge heart for people. So yeah, him going into psychiatry and uh, even him receiving this award, it, it, it feels very in line with who he is. I have known Dr. Mittenall for the last four or five years now. Um, and I met him first time when he came to Wichita to um, interview with us and uh, we knew it right away that he was the right fit for us. You know, I would describe him as a gentleman and a scholar because he is a gentleman first and, and he's a scholar himself. Now he's obviously well educated and, 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 and knows his field very well. He is a good human being first. I'm Dr. Larry Mittenall. I'm a child and adult psychiatrist with Ascension Via Christi. I grew up um, mostly in Texas. I'm an army brat, so we moved around quite a bit and then moved around the country basically for, for training and school after that. For undergrad, um, a degree in biology, and then uh, in DC at Georgetown for a master's in science policy and then back to Texas to do a master's in public health and medical school, and then residency at Dartmouth for child and adolescent psychiatry and adult psychiatry, so five years there. Psychiatry just has its own history, um, and like every history, it has you know um, great moments, but it also has moments of failure. And so I think being able to, one, kind of admit that, and then take a proactive approach about how we empower these communities that just haven't had, um, that haven't had access or, or haven't had the history too, to know um, of how helpful these things can be. I was recently on a, on a panel with three other black child psychiatrists. Now to paint how, how rare this is, so in the US, I think the estimated population of, of, of black Americans is like 40 million people, right? Um, for in the nation, there are about 4,100 you know, psychiatrists. Of those, 82 of them are black. So then of that, of that, of those 82, there's an even smaller minority that practice in the field that I practice, right? Um, so the fact that the four of us could even be together having kind of a online Facebook symposium about wellness, um, that's, a, that's actually a really big and kind of novel thing. But I think that's where it begins. It begins with us um, really using the tools of new media to really reach um, people who otherwise wouldn't. In medical school, I had decided that I loved seeing young people and that I, I knew that was probably gonna be my area, the place where I you know, really just thrived and could see myself every day just being happy because I get to be a little bit silly. We often hear him laughing out loud in, uh, in the hallways and so that really helps because psychiatry can be, because we see a lot of um, anguish uh, and to be able to deal that, you need to be a pillar yourself, in a way. So, um, and he sort of um, exemplifies that. So uh, really early in my career, um, I had the great fortune of running into a, a, a young woman, Roz Hutchinson, who, who works at Ascension, who does you know, um, PR and just has, has so much um, energy and ideas for how do we get messages out. And so um, really early on she asked, you know, would you be interested in doing some news or television spots to answer questions about returning to school anxiety? And I said, sure, I'd, I'd, love, to, I'd love to do that. And so 
if I could be available for those things, then I tried to make myself available for things. And then, um, and then I think with the encouragement of um, colleagues, Dr. Mittal being uh, um, among them, they encouraged me to really think about how to do so proactively, right? So not just wait for the opportunity to arrive, but, but how can you start speaking into things and giving information, um, or at least providing to um, a canvas, a library of, of tools for families and for individuals. And so that's when I really got started um, being serious, um, maybe about a year, year and a half ago, really, with um, doing YouTube videos, you know, talking about uh, diagnosis and, um, and what that means and what the treatments look like and how people can access those things. That's kind of where I'm, I'm moving uh, next and, and trying to reach out and, and help parents where they are. Social media and, and the internet, you know, there is a good side and a bad side to it. And, and it is up to us what we choose to see, you know. And, and he is creating uh, this another sort of content and, and it's not just him, there are a lot of other physicians who are doing that. And that is creating this huge wealth of information in which if you see one video, the next video is gonna come up. And I think his reach, if um, I were to predict, is going to go beyond this community. It's gonna go national. Yeah, I think uh, he's gonna do great things. I think the future for Dr. Mittenall is truly limitless. Um, his mission work uh, extends far beyond the clinical walls that he practices, and he has the ability to, to be the bridge for so many families and for so many medical students who want to pursue a career in psychiatry or to just build a more connected family. I cannot think of a better person for this award because in this pandemic, he has taken on the challenge uh, with the grace and the grit uh, and imparted the knowledge to everyone. So I think he deserves every bit of it. So I guess a little side note for Larry, he's, he's equally as talented um, in being a drummer as he is a psychiatrist. <laughs> I'd like to thank the Kansas African American Museum for the Doris Kerr Larkins Rising Star Award. Uh, it really is a great honor to receive it. And uh, I'd also like to thank um, the wonderful people who have contributed to, to me um, being here, most notably my parents, uh, Larry and Yvonne Mittenall, um, and my mentors along the journey, Dr. Thomas Matthews, Dr. Craig Donnelly, and Dr. Steve Cobble. We would like to thank Ascension Via Christi as our Doris Kerr Larkins Rising Star sponsor for the evening.